tell me, is is hydrogen the fuel of the future? I would say it's the uh, it's the fuel of nowadays. So I'm driving a hydrogen car. Um, in the country I know best, uh, Germany, we have 70 fueling stations, so it gives me all the comfort uh, to travel from one corner of the country to the other, uh, and I'm enjoying it. So it, it works already, it's a mature technology, but however, yes, we need to ramp up, uh, of course, the infrastructure and the renewable hydrogen production or the decarbonized hydrogen production with uh, specific technologies. But all is has started and it's on its way. Why has it taken us so long to get to this point? Because CO2 is so cheap, because crude oil is so cheap. So if on one hand, uh, the global community says we have to get rid of CO2 emissions, but at the other end uh, is uh, subsidizing, funding it. Give you one example, kerosene in airplanes, no tax on it. So if you do it, uh, there's, uh, it's, it's a no brainer that of course, new fuels, fuels that need a little bit more uh, investment, cannot compete. That's the only reason. If we now start to take the Paris Agreement seriously, uh, and if ministers, if uh, the European Union, uh, if the OECD starts to regard CO2 as something to be taxed, then things will change dramatically already. Uh, in some areas on the globe where you can produce electricity very cheaply, like Saudi Arabia, you can produce hydrogen on that basis very cheaply as well. So far, I think the hydrogen business was too much in silos. So the OEMs, the car constructing companies and producers, they were thinking, well, we have to do it, but we need uh, the mineral oil companies to help us, but they didn't really cooperate. Uh, and I think it's, it's governments uh, it's the policy makers that need to make up their minds. Uh, if they decide to go really for decarbonization, deep decarbonization, there is no escape. You have to combine electricity, battery, with gas grid being used for hydrogen. And then this cooperation will lead to fast results. You will then be able to cheaply transport renewable energy via the gas grid in form of hydrogen and then you can fuel your mobility with that. But the investment that needs to be done is a public investment to a, to a high extent uh, to get uh, this infrastructure uh, to the right level. Uh, and that is why I would say it's a combined effort of the public, but also of private companies that are early movers. Uh, and uh, basically, we can see that they all exist. It just has to be orchestrated in the right manner and we are on, on our way to do that. Do you think the public's ready to embrace another change like that? Depends what you understand by saying the public. If you look at the Fridays for Future movement, so the very young people, which is also the public, no difficulties to make them understand. So we address them already. We can see that it's a wow effect. So young people seeing, looking at this technology and understanding how it works, they accept it immediately. Also, people who are not very much involved in politics, they, they understand immediately. The problem is where politicians that to a high extent also depend on old economy um, come into place. That's where it starts to get difficult. The case is very simple. If you really want to make the change, you can do it, but you have to combine battery and fuel cell so electricity and hydrogen, uh, and then you can achieve an affordable decarbonization. Great, thank you very much. Thank you for talking to us. Okay. Yeah.